All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac. Today we're going to do a, a slightly different video. Instead of uh, X's and O's, I'm going to talk a little bit about developing your system and, and things that I think uh, that I've kind of uh, information that I've garnered over the course of 22 years as a as a head football coach um, and 24, 25 years coaching in general. Things that, that I've kind of learned along the way to kind of help you figure out how to develop your system and almost your philosophy in a way. We'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more as a system than a philosophy. Make sure you check out uh, some of our partners. Dome Hatch, which is the headwear company we use with Play Fast Football and the school that I'm currently at, they have a uh, custom line of hats where with a great online hat builder where you can uh, customize your hat, you can put your logo, you can change the style of the hat, you can change the colors, you can change the stitching, you could put custom uh, embroidery on there. Everything you do is custom to, gener to develop or build your own hat that markets your brand, your program, you in general, whatever it may be. These are all things that you're, uh, you're able to make custom, all right? And that's what makes Dome so special. It's customizing the experience because every hat has a story. So make sure you are letting Dome help you tell your story. All right, Baker Sporting Goods, which is a company we use for our uniforms, our spirit packs, our coaches gear. If we do any online fan stores, we use Baker Sporting Goods. They got great sales reps, consistent Quality service, all right? Make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods. Just Play Football, more powerful presentation. It's the digital software I use to diagram plays. Any webinars I do, clinics I talk at, uh, any stuff from my Patreon website that involves diagrams, I always use Just Play. It also has some really unique features that uh, bring your, your playbook, your game plan, to life to your players and kind of uh, let you in a more powerful way understand what your players understand about your playbook, your game plan. So make sure you check out Just Play Football. Game Strat sideline replay system we use. If you're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system, check out Game Strat Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. You work on elbows in, thumbs up, where your eyes belong, coming out of your stance, hips, all the things that you need to become uh, better, uh, a better striker. Uh, almost every position needs to at some point strike, engage, disengage. So might as well work in the offseason in your weight room on striking. All right, so make sure you check out Difference USA, Ultimate Striking Machine, thousands of reps, and you don't need a partner. It's just you and the machine. All right, high and tight ball security training aid we use. It has different sensors in the panels. If the ball is not held correctly in the proper position with the proper points of pressure, you do not hear the beep. The sensors don't get activated. Sensors aren't activated. You don't hear the beep. You're not holding the ball correctly. So make sure, check out high and tight. When you get the ball where you need to be, you'll hear that beep. Now it gives your kids, your players, yourself, that instant muscle memory to say, yes, that's where the ball needs to be. That's where I need to hold it every time. Ball security is job security. Make, a, make sure you check out high and tight. So here's the way I want to kind of start the video off. Would coaching be as fun if there was only one style of offense that everybody had to use if there was one technique taught at every position that everybody had to teach or everybody had to use, if there was one style of defense all right, or system of defense that everybody had to use, if there was one way of playing special teams that everybody had to use, if every coach across the country had to use the same set systems, techniques, fundamentals, all right, would coaching be as fun? All right, and my opinion is no, because the thing that makes coaching so fun is how diverse the game of football is. There are so many different ways to skin a cat. There are so many different ways to run an offense. So many different ways to run a defense. So many different techniques, fundamentals, buzzwords, teaching points, coaching cues. So many different things that make each coach, all right, individually who they are. When you're out there, outside of wins and losses, we all know about wins and losses, but when you see guys talking about coaches and what would be a great hire and yeah we need to hire this guy and this guy would be great as a linebacker coach and this guy would be great as the best D-line coach in the country this guy's the best OC the best DC outside of, of wins and losses what makes that person who they are all right is it how they deliver their material is it how they teach techniques and fundamentals is it the scheme itself is it how they teach the scheme is it the philosophy behind the scheme is it the fact that they practice what they preach is it the fact that their practices are better than other people in general, the fact is we have a way to kind of gauge who we think are the better coaches in the business. All right? and, and again, obviously wins and losses is always going to be one of those things. But even if you separate it from wins and losses, within the business, on social media, you're always hearing about you know, the things that, excuse me, that make certain coaches better D-line coaches, O-line coaches, linebacker coaches, wide receiver coaches. What are those things? Because if everybody had to do the same thing the same way, Okay, 
then it would be tougher, in my opinion, to, to differentiate who the better ones are. All right, so if we all had to, had to distribute all the information in the same manner, same buzzwords, same, you know, same techniques, same fundamentals, we all use the same footwork, we all played in the same formation, we all played in the same defensive structure, our ability to adapt outside of that, our, to adapt outside of that, our ability to grow, our ability to evolve, our ability to wrinkle, would kind of be lessened. Now, you could probably look at it that light and say, hey, well, if everybody had to do all the same things, then it might be easier to separate who's better than the other at coaching that because we all have to use the same system, techniques, fundamentals. I can see that argument as well, but I'm going to argue the other side. I'm going to say that what, what makes coaches who they are is how they do what they do. All right, And what, what makes football what it is is the ability to be diverse. There is not one way to skin a cat. All right, there's a, a, so many different ways to move the ball on offense, so many different ways to get first downs, so many ways to talk about your run game and your passing game, so many different schemes in your run game and in your passing game. There's so many different things on defense, how you teach block reaction, block destruction, pursuit drills, tackling drills, okay? And everybody usually has their own little wrinkle, niche, you know, whatever it is that makes them who they are, and to me, that's what makes coaches, all right, you know, who, in, in my opinion, that's what makes coaches who they are, and that's what makes it kind of separates coaches from one, you know, level or the other. Uh, because in my opinion, we, we all have we all have access to the same information. Every one of us could go out and run, you know, or try and run the Kansas City Chiefs offense, or Alabama Clemson's offense, or Coastal Carolina's offense, or Iowa State's defense, you know, or, uh, you know. The Steelers defense or the Ravens defense or, you know, the Rams defense. We all have the ability to study that information and, and go out and, and try and run that exact system. The difference to me is how you take those things and, and you make yourself the coach that you are using all those different things. All right. How do you mold yourself into the coach that you are, the things that you believe in? on the field, off the field, the values you believe in, the techniques and fundamentals on the field you believe in, the buzzwords, the key, you know, the, the, the coaching cues, the pedagogy of how you teach. Those are the things to me, all right, that are so awesome within the game of football because I think the game would be boring if we had to do it a different way. If we all had to go out and do it the same way, to me, that would just be boring. If it was the same offensive formation, defensive front, defensive coverage, Everybody had to do the same thing, the same kickoff, the same kick return, same field goal, the same what, punt, punt return. If everybody had to do the same thing, to me, the game gets boring. The diversity in, in the game of football, to me, all right, is, is the thing that makes it what it is. The fact that we can choose to run what we want to run. The fact that we can choose to teach things how we want to teach them, to drill them how we want to drill them, to practice how we want to practice. All right, that's what makes, to me, coaching so intriguing. So here's a couple of things that I think you need to take a look at when you're thinking about developing your system on offense, your system on defense, maybe your system in the offseason, maybe it's your weight training system. The, the, the information is different, all right, so if it's weight room offseason stuff, you're not going to be looking at, at all 22 film, you're going to be getting your information from other places, but you're still developing who you are as a coach, what you believe in, what you value, okay? I think the first thing you need to look at is adapt or fail. This game is going to change. If you're in this business long enough and you do this long enough, the game is going to change. And if you don't adapt your beliefs and systems within, all right, what their core values, if you don't adapt and wrinkle them, all right, the game's probably going to pass you by. You hear that term all the time. Older coaches, the game passed them by, the game passed them by. And all the great ones will tell you, whether it's Saban or Urban Meyer or, or you know, Dabo Sweeney now or Bill Belichick or Tom Landry or... Don Shula, uh, you know, whoever the greatest ones may be, those are only a few, please, if, if I didn't mention a certain coach, these are live videos off the top of my head, so please don't shoot me for that, all right? But all those guys will tell you, you got to adapt. You got to be able to change. You got to be flexible, all right? So to me, the first thing you got to think about is no matter what your system is, I don't care if you're wing tee, flex bone, air raid, run and shoot, you got to adapt. You've got to learn and wrinkle, and as the game changes, you've got to be able to change. The second thing is, this is the big thing to me. There is no right or wrong. Point blank. Okay? There's no right or wrong. Whatever you do on offense, you've got to get 10 yards and get a first down. You've got to matriculate down the field 
to score points. You've got to score more points than the other team. You've got to take care of the football. You've got to put your defense in good situations. There's no right or wrong way to do that. Okay, you can argue what's right or wrong. You can argue what you think is best or not. But at the end of the day, there is no right or wrong. All right, the results are, are basically what, what makes each system. And every year you end up with systems that are flavor of the month or things that are hot right now or things that are hot because of the results and certain teams are using them. You're always going to look at teams that are winning and say, hey, what do they do? We need to do that. All right, but just remember, there's no right or wrong. If you want to be three down, be three down. If you want to be four down, be four down. If you want to be one high, be one high. If you want to be two high, if you want to be three high, okay, whatever you want to be within that system, all right, there is no right or wrong. You can do it. If you want to be flexible, if you want to be wing T, it doesn't matter. Do it, and, and how you do it, how you teach it, the kids and the, player, the players and the staff that you have, that's what's going to make it what it is. All right, but there is no right or wrong answer. You can't sit down every year and say that the winners play this system or this scheme. There's going to be three, four teams. There's going to be four, three teams. There's going to be four, two, five teams. You know, there's going to be three, three, five teams. There's going to be one high winners. There's going to be two high winners. There's going to be teams that run it. There's going to be teams that throw it. There's going to be gap schemes. There's going to be zone schemes. All right, there is no right or wrong answer. And don't pigeonhole yourself into thinking that there is a holy grail of right and wrong. Okay? Know your players and know your staff. That's going to change everywhere you go, and it's going to change from year to year. All right? And, and it kind of goes along the lines of adapt or fail. Understand who your players are. What schemes are best for the players you have? Not schemes in your mind on paper that are the best. What schemes are the best for the players that you have? Do you have the coaches that can teach that scheme? Can your coaches teach the fundamentals, the techniques, all right, and, and the uh, overall schematics? The reads, the keys, where players need to be based on the stimulus of, or, or the, you know, their reaction to a stimulus. Can you get those players in your program to do the things that you need them to do? Can your staff teach the things that you need them to teach? If you go into a staff and all those guys have been one high guys their whole life, you've got to teach them if you want to be a two high guy, you've got to teach them all, right, all the things that they need to understand about playing too high. And let's just assume that they don't know anything about it, which most coaches do. But let's just assume they didn't know anything about it. you got to be able to teach them that. You can't go out and say, this is what we do. You guys got to go out and do it. you got to be able to teach them what you do, how you do it, what your adjustments are, how you line up the formations, right? And then you got to evaluate and say, hey, if all my guys are better at this, do I need to bang my head against the wall and do what I want to do? Or do I have to adapt to my surroundings and say, hey, you know what? I think this is better for my staff. I think this is better for my coaches. I think this is better for my players. Okay, because at the end of the day, your coaches and your players will have a big impact on the type of system wherever you're at that you want to use. Okay, sell what you believe, big time. If you want kids to buy into something, you've got to believe it. Okay, you've got to believe in it, and then you've got to sell what you believe in. You've got to sell that to your kids. If you're an up-tempo team, you better sell that tempo and, and how you need to practice and how you need to do all those things. If you're a, a you know, a... a Three yards in a cloud of dust physical football team, you better sell that mindset. You better practice that mindset. You know, whatever it is that you're doing, sell it and believe in it because kids and coaches will know right away if you're selling them a bill of goods. If you're selling them something that's phony that you don't believe in, all right, that, that's going to come out in the wash sooner or later, and they will all know, hey, coach, you're selling us this stuff that you really don't believe in. You know, you're selling this, you know, maybe something you read in a book, but you don't buy into it. You know, maybe a scheme you saw... On, on, on in a game somewhere, but you really don't buy into it. It's not who you are. All right, you got to try and be yourself. You got to sell what you believe. All right, and, and that's a big thing. I've been told that by several different coaches. Be who you are. Be yourself. Sell what you believe. All right, whatever it is, whatever your philosophy is, whatever your system is. If we're going to throw the ball sixty times, sell it. If that's how we're going to move the ball and, and score points, sell it. If we're going to run the ball sixty times, sell it. Whatever it is you're going to do. All right, own it. Live it. Sell it, all right, with, with all the validation in the world, all right? Sell it to your players because they'll buy in better. All right, and the last thing I'm going to tell you for right now, all right, and I could probably go through a million things that in, in my 25 years, you know, that we could talk about. The last thing I'm going to tell you right now is be where your feet are. Don't coach something for where you want to be. Coach it where you are, all right? Don't think about trying to develop a system so that if you're at what you think is a launching pad job, all right, don't think about developing your system at the launching pad so that it is eventually down the road. I get questions from guys all the time. Hey, I want to be a head coach. I want to be a coordinator. I, I want to do all these things. 
Here's what I tell them right away. Go out and study. Learn everything you can learn. And the bottom line is figure out who you are and what you want to do. And then have to, you have to go out and do that. Don't keep putting together a system and at six different stops you're building your system for the ultimate, you know, uh, the, the job that you ultimately want or the job you think is your, you know, your dream job. You've got it wherever you are, wherever your feet are, you've got to win there, you've got to develop there, you've got to coach there. So wherever your feet are at, have your system that is going to work where your feet are at. Okay, so in my opinion, those are just ideas of things that I look at all the time. I would probably say 80% of the things in the offseason that I study or look at, I probably don't use all right, all the time with my program because if they don't fit me winning right now, I don't try and do them. I don't stop learning. I don't stop studying. But if they don't fit me right now, I'm not going to use them right now to say, hey, I learned those things in the offseason. I think down the road that's part of my system. I'm going to do that's not, the way I, that's not the way I coach. It's not the way I think. I'm going to do right now what I think helps my program right now. And if there's other things out there that I'm studying, then I'll get to the point where I understand that maybe I use them down the road, maybe I use them somewhere else, but I can't use them right now. So hopefully that helps you guys understand what you need to do, how you need to do it to develop your system. Again, that's just my opinion. It's not the holy grail of anything. It's just what I think. All right, remember to turn on your uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber. Turn the notifications on. All right, make sure that you uh, thumbs up, thumbs down if you like or don't like the content. All right, leave me a comment. Every comment I see on my end, I try to respond to. Appreciate everything you guys do for me. It's about time for us to start after school. People are knocking on the window to get in the door that it's locked right now. So you won't play well until you play fast. These are live, never edited. See you next time.